Hey, welcome back into today's video. Another OG YouTuber accused of terrible things. Colleen Ballinger, aka Miranda Sings, has been accused of terrible situations with minors. These situations do not just involve her, but also her friends and family. Creepy, inappropriate messages with very young viewers and other disturbing things. There's a lot of really weird and creepy behavior in this situation, not to mention she just released a song. That's correct, a song with a ukulele in response to these very serious alleged things. I, I'm actually not surprised. In today's episode of Exploring YouTubers, good God almighty. Colleen Ballinger's YouTube channel is 8.58 million subscribers, where she mostly blogs about her life. She has a specific vlogs channel, as well as her most popular channel, which many of you may know, Miranda Sings. The Miranda Sings channel has over 10.7 million subscribers. Miranda Sings is her alter ego, a caricature of herself. The character's ironic for wearing very bright red lipstick, which they sell. Hello everybody, welcome to Miranda Mondays. I am your host, Miranda Sings. And we got a really special show for you today. Colleen's been under some very serious alleged situations involving the grooming of some of her very young fans. For example, at one point starting a group chat called The Weenies. One of the users was actually YouTuber Adam McIntyre, who at the time was around the young age of 12 to 16 during this uh, situation. Here she's seen asking Adam if he needs questions for his Q&A, to which she says, are you a virgin? Adam says, my butt looks so good today, to which Colleen says, pictures Adam. Colleen asked the group, tell me all your thoughts you had when you first got your periods, please and thank you. Example, I thought I pooped myself because the blood was so dark in my underwear. Then asking Adam, what's your favorite position? Now it's important to note that Colleen was in her 30s in this private group chat with these children who were all minors. Now when she says things to them like send pictures of their behinds, children's going to be children, they're going to do things like that. They're going to think they're supposed to do that. She would also send weird messages like in video form for them to do things that are honestly uncomfortable. Adam says the Weenies group chat consisting mostly of 13 to 17 year olds I was a part of with Colleen all had an inside joke Colleen started to do with periods or some stuff that she sent us this video and all of us had to go out and buy tampons and reenact it for the group chat it was so effing weird why there was also some of her friends and family involved in these group chats like her brother trent ballinger one user says, a thread of things Trent Ballinger, a man in his 30s, sent to me when I was 13 to 14 years old. Trent will be in the dark gray here saying, just don't share our conversation with anyone. Anything we talk about stays between you and I. Okay, don't worry. Thanks. He says, I'm told not to talk to people under 18. I do so just to spread positivity. So yeah. 13 year old saying, I don't see anything wrong with talking to people that are under 18. Who said that? family and then he gears it towards a conversation to do with her sexuality it gets weird you don't look by so i'm like head tilts oh i don't but yeah i think i am why do you think you are i don't know i just don't think i'm straight i guess just be honest with yourself you're young you don't have to label yourself yet you're very right yeah i don't really want to completely label myself yet but i guess the closest thing i am to is being bi why do you think that curious why I don't know, I guess why would I think I'm straight? At this point, I just really don't know, but I'm questioning. How old are you? She says, 13. He says, yeah, I wouldn't question it just yet, Peapod. Good night, don't let the sexuality bite. It's okay, you're gonna grow up doing what you love and probably fade away from me. Adults in the room, I think we understand this type of conversation that he's having with this 13 year old and how inappropriate it actually is, but it gets even more creepy when he invites her to a show. Thank you. 
Something you didn't know about me is entiendo español un poco. That's right. I've been practicing Spanish for the last 10 years. And one of the applications that I use reached out and wanted to sponsor what we do here on this channel. And I really appreciate that. Babbel is an awesome application that teaches you how to speak in new languages. And everything is easily designed to help learners of all levels. And they even have online classes. This application prepares you for situations that you'll encounter in your real life. For example, if you meet somebody on the street that needs directions that are not from here, you'll be able to help them out. And that's a really good feeling to be able to do that. That. And I have a really cool idea. You guys can download this application and you can learn something in Spanish and then you can tell me in the comment section below or any of my social media. And for every person who downloads the application, I'll receive $25. So it's a great way to support the channel. I love getting sponsors for applications that I actually use and big thanks to Babbel for supporting what we do. Do. To get Babbel, just click the link below, and when you use my link, you'll get 60% off. So go ahead and click it and start learning a new language with me today. P.S. You should come to the Orange Show. Oh my god, I wish I could. My mom said I can't go to California. Why not? Because she doesn't really like California. I don't know why. I love it, and I've always wanted to go. And it's really far since I live in Pennsylvania. What's wrong with Cali? My mom really hates traffic. Yeah, but when I'm a doll, I really want to fly out to California by myself. How long do you have to go? The earliest I could go would be the summer of 2023. I'll be 18, but it might have to be 2024 or later, sadly. And then he does the weird thinking emoji. How old will you be? In November? Yep. Almost 14 at that point. Four more years to go. Grooming by definition is the establishment of a trust factor within also these types of inappropriate conversations. You can see where it's going. Here he's got a video of her saying that she kind of looks like his ex-girlfriend. He would also have this sort of dynamic with her where when she wanted to get offline, he uh, didn't want her to. Saying she wanted to take a break, he's like, nah. Wants to limit her time on Twitter, he says, nope. Says I thought it wouldn't hurt to take a little break from Twitter, he says it hurts. Says I'll still be on Twitter sometimes, don't worry. He says I'm very worried. She says I'd also be scared every night I'd accidentally forget not to tweet after I told him good night because if he saw me on Twitter, he'd feel like I had lied to him. It was very stressful. Then he proceeds to have inappropriate conversations that no adult man should be having with a 13 year old. When Blank said and thank God did it with Peapod makes it sound like you two had uh, relations. No, it's one of Tim's song lyrics. But she says she couldn't without you and thanked you. Sounds like you two are a couple, lol. She again specifies the song lyrics. Had a lot of growing up to do and thank God I did it with you. So we did growing up together, I guess. But we're just best friends. And then he says, uh-huh, sure. She then specifies again that her and her friend are just good friends. And then he says, just saying it sounded like you and her were gay together. And she's like, no, it's just the lyrics. And then he's like, uh-huh. And again, we have a 30-year-old adult gearing a very young and impressionable 13-year-old child towards inappropriate situations. Also involved in these types of inappropriate exchanges with minors was a friend of Colleen's named Corey DeSoto, who had his own group chat called, well, you can read it on the screen right here. As inappropriate as the title of the group chat suggests, Ready to Glare, another YouTuber made a really good point, and I want to share that with you. Adam McIntyre shows a screenshot of the group chat, Corey's cult, which in and of itself, we already have issues because we go back to the initial and recurring problem. That is the fact that these chats are full of minors. Why would you call the chat that? Because to me, and maybe I'm misreading this, it comes off as you already had a particular intention. The same way that if you theme any particular chat with anything, whether it's or not with anything, you're probably gonna end up talking about the thing, right? If you have a chat that's soccer themed in name, you're probably gonna talk about soccer at some point, right? Not to mention the leaked audio recording where he acknowledges how young the members of this chat were. This is very creepy. Hey everyone, it's Corey. I just wanted to record a voice memo because I have like a lot to say. Um, but first of all, I just wanna say that like, I love all of you, like you all honestly mean so much to me. Oh my God. Um, oh my you have God. no idea. I know that it sounds weird because I'm a full grown adult and some of you are younger. Oh my God. And blah, blah, blah. Oh but um, I can honestly think of all of you like as my best friends. Like I don't have friends. Oh my and God. I'm a loner and I'm a loser. Like my only friend is Colleen. Oh my God. And like, I, it's 
so comforting to like go online and talk to you guys and and feel like loved and cared about because I love and care about all of you. Um, yeah. And I trust you and like I like with all my friends I vent to you and when I'm angry and I feel better and I feel comfort. So we have Colleen, her brother, and a close friend all engaged in inappropriate conversations with minors. There really is no excuse for that, unless you're Colleen, where she acknowledges that conversation she had with a minor she sent lingerie to is uncomfortable. In her very first video addressing everything three years ago, she says this. You have receipts proving the things that I'm about to tell you. However, I feel uncomfortable sharing them because he is a minor. So I'm only gonna be showing you the things that were between adults or things that were already public. The biggest issue that came from his video is that I sent a child underwear and Wow, anyone who heard this out of context and was offended, I completely understand because I would be too. But in this situation, context is everything. So I would like to give you some context to this situation. Four years ago, I did a live stream and in this live stream, I did a giveaway. I was giving away clothes that were unused, tagged still on, brand new, that I had just bought that I did not want. One of the items that was in this box was a really ugly pair of underwear. As soon as we pulled them out, Corey and I started laughing and joking around about how ugly they were. Why did I buy these ridiculous underwear? It was so stupid. I just got a big old box from Forever 21 and I want to open it up in front of you guys. Maybe I'll send the ones I don't want to you guys. I got a bunch of crop tops. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> the panties, the panties from <laughs> And people started asking for them in the live stream. Who wants that bra? You want the bra? Everyone wants the bra. At the end of the live stream, I was done giving away clothes, and then this boy who made this video about me recently, he asked for the underwear. Yay, we picked people. I think that's enough. Did that boy win these or not? I don't know. He has to tell me what he wants. What do you say? Is he being <laughs> He said, um, hi, you have ugly clothes, but I want those ratchet panties and bra signed by Corey because he modeled them well. Yeah. <laughs> it was so ridiculous and funny. We laughed about it and I forgot to send them to him. And eventually he tweeted me asking me for them again. I sent them to him. He put them on over his clothes and posted about them. It was like a big joke within the fandom. I did this publicly. That live stream is still up right now. And I've always given out weird random things in live streams. I've given out a taco cost. Costume. I've given out old bobby pins, dirty shoes. A few weeks ago, I sent a fan like a single piece of toilet paper. I've always given away weird stuff. And so in my mind at the time, this was no different than all the other weird stuff I send to my fans as a joke. Now, in hindsight, I see how completely stupid of me. I should have never sent that. I don't know what part of my brain was missing at the time. Now, there's a lot I could say about this, but I think I'm going to lead with the fact that you lied about this. You said Adam begged for it, but you clearly asked him if he wanted them. Oh my god, that makes me laugh. I want to send him something. Do you want the bra, Adam? Adam do you want the bra and panties? Tweet right now. Another thing that I noticed was back in her addressing everything video about three years ago, she attempted to justify her actions by saying, uh, that she was closer to her fans than anyone. Love hiring my fans for many reasons. One, they're super freaking talented. Two, they know me better than anybody. Now this is something I have to pause on because her fans probably know her better than anyone because she was sharing with them intimate details of her life. Again, these are 13, 14 year old children. Saying he's lied to everyone and said I cheated. When would I cheat? when I was working 24 hours a day. It's important for everyone to know that she's talking to these children about her divorce. Colleen, you are a 30 year old woman talking to children in a private chat. I would wager that if the parents knew the types of things that were going on in this chat, that this whole controversy, well, it would have happened a whole lot sooner. And besides the creepy conversations that we know of she was having behind the scenes with these children, wait till you hear about her tour, where on several occasions she did inappropriate acts on stage with minors. One girl named Becky came out talking about her humiliating experience that she had on stage. One user saying, Colleen Ballinger bringing a minor on stage during a live show and has them spread their legs on stage. Then she plays a fart sound while the minor is already in a vulnerable position to make a young audience laugh. Hi, okay, my name is Becky. I'm the girl in this video, and this video has one over a million views, and that is a lot of people to be seeing this story without hearing it from me, so I want to explain this. So I was a fan of Colleen and all the Ballinger family for a very, very long time, and I think in this video I was about 16. 
If you've never been to a Miranda show, Colleen frequently has segments where she calls people up on stage. One of those segments was the porn bit, which I'm not really going to be explaining in this video, but that's why I was kind of trying to dress skimpy so that I would be called up on stage and basically get degraded by Miranda. But I did not get called up for that. I got called up for the yoga challenge. Now, as soon as I stood up from the audience, I saw Colleen's eyes widen because she realized I was not wearing pants. But for some reason, that didn't stop her from continuing. In fact, no adult at any point stepped in in this situation. So we get to the point in the yoga challenge where I am laying down and Colleen is spreading my legs basically as far as she can. So she spreads them so far that you can see the spandex I was wearing under my romper, which thank God I was wearing. Now, the original video posted by Xander, Xandar, I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong, is only a screenshot, but there is a whole video of this. But that screenshot is the most important because that is the moment I will never forget where I was laying under Colleen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people were laughing and I was terrified that my body wasn't covered enough up enough by the spandex or the romper. I basically felt naked, so it felt incredibly satisfying. I was younger and my body was still developing and I was still becoming comfortable with myself. So for her to use my body as entertainment on stage really set um, my confidence back quite a lot. And not to mention after all this, after the show, I had to walk back to my car where there was many men staring at me in a very predatory way that they were not looking at me before because of how exposed I had been on stage. So I literally did not feel safe leaving the venue. And I'm not saying this was so people are debating that in that comment section, but as someone who has been sexual, this situation gave me that same feeling where it feels like you need to purge and like clean out your insides, you know, just that nasty, gross feeling. There's a couple comments on Xander's video being like, oh, she signed up for that. Why is this such a big deal? Blah, blah, blah. Colleen exploited my minor body for entertainment and money and did not protect my safety at this show. As an outsider looking into this situation, it may seem like this wasn't a big deal, but this was really pretty scary for my teenage self, and especially someone who loved and looked up to Colleen. And I could never say anything because everybody loved her. But this is who she really is. She uses kids for her own gain. I was a minor, and again, she did not protect me. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about taking your kids to a Miranda show, I would advise you to think twice because you may come back with years of trauma and I don't wish that on anyone. With all of the context that we currently have, these stage situations are that much more disturbing. YouTuber Tamimi says it well. Oh, I'm so pregnant. Oh, oh. how are you doing, dear sister-in-law? I'm so excited for you to give birth to this baby. I love little girls. <laughs> This is something that is deeply disturbing. From the direct communications she's had with her young fans, to the videos that she has made knowing that she has young fans watching, to the live shows that she has done with her young fans volunteering, going up on stage and doing disgusting things like having a young child reach down her pants and pull out snacks. I don't remember what it was, like cheese balls or something. And so now, watch this. We're on the date jeans. It's really romantic. Oh, we're getting clothes and personal. Oh, but I'm so hungry, jeans. Hold on, I got a snack. <laughs> was this in your self-health book? Was this in my self-health book? Was it? Because I brought self-health with me and I was just wondering. Well, shouldn't you know if you've read it? <laughs> I'm just kidding, jeans. I'm just kidding. I'm loving I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you want a cheese bomb? Um, I'd love one. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. <laughs> There's a multitude of just terrible, disturbing, and creepy things to do with this woman. And actually, at this point, I'm really not surprised because of things like this. I used to, like, actually, like, rip things up or get angry. So I grabbed my dog for no reason, just grabbed the dog and pinched its skin and dug my nails into it. So the dog yelps, turns around to protect itself, and bites me in the face. And I got stitches, I went to the hospital, and they were like, what happened? And I was like, the dog just bit me. And then they had to put the dog to sleep because the dog was dangerous to be around. So I murdered a dog. That's pretty sadistic, but here's another terrible thing. There are leaks all over my house right now. Brand new house, by the way. And every time it rains, it leaks. Just like a teenage girl's <laughs> <laughs> Just, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. It leaks so much like a little girl's greases when she watches me. 
like a little girl's creases when she's watching those strange little boys on music. On June 28th, 2023, Joshua Evans, the ex-husband of Colleen, said, anyone feeling hurt and gaslit right now, my message to you is this. Your experiences were real. The proof is there. Your trauma should be taken seriously. The proof is there. Your anger is justified. The proof is there. You deserve better. Take your power back. Sending you love. So currently amidst this entire backlash that she's receiving, she's selling canceled merch and making canceled jokes. There's only one thing that can save you now. Drop it, Corey. <laughs> you have to do an apology video. It'll go viral and then you will become very, very famous. Okay, this is your only chance at saving yourself and not getting canceled. And go. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's terrible. You can't actually apologize. Oh, that person you saw, that wasn't me. I don't even know who that is anymore. And if you do it, anybody, and if you don't forgive me, that's okay. But please buy my merch, you know, something like that. Try again. I'm sorry you were all offended. No, 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 okay, that was better. Very good. I'm sorry you were offended. Very gaslighty of you. Okay, hold on though, there's something missing. There's something missing. You need to be crying. So come here, come hither, close to the line. Now try. So I want everybody to pay attention to that because this is extremely ironic. She's laying out exactly how YouTubers do their apologies, the fact that they don't care um, what she would do during an apology. And as I'm making this video, she's just released an apology. The most bizarre, creepy, I mean, it tracks, it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, the response was her singing a song with a ukulele. So this song's about how she's actually the victim and she's very clearly attempting to make people feel sorry for her. Just like she was demonstrating in how you are supposed to do canceled YouTuber apology video. The video titled High has 2.6 million views, 48,000 likes with an astounding 323,000 dislikes. And currently this video as of July 3rd has over 900,000 dislikes. Obviously not going to be able to play you the song because I don't want the video to be striked down any sort of way, but I'm going to read you some quotes from this song directly and we'll talk about a couple parts. It opens saying, toxic gossip train chugging down the tracks of misinformation. Tie me to the tracks and harass me for my past. Rumors look like facts if you don't mind the gaps. I won't survive in the crash, but at least you're having fun. So this is actually very pathetic and desperate. And what she's actually saying is she's going to take absolutely no accountability because she's done no wrong. In fact, here's a direct quote from the song about that. I know you wanted me to say I'm 100% in the wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to take that route of admitting the lies and rumors you made up for clout. All she had to do was apologize to the children and the parents who were affected emotionally. Even if it was not her intention to hurt, she did. But she's too tied up in her own ego to the point where she's more focused on how she looks. She wants to be seen as a good person, but all I see is a very selfish person. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way. I was just trying to be besties with everybody. This is called a blanket statement where it kind of talks about what everybody's upset about, but it doesn't provide the details, so you don't really know. And I would say it's hard to argue a 30-year-old woman asking privately to children about their periods and what their butts look like and to send pictures isn't at least a very creepy way to communicate. Just earlier today, July 3rd, 2023, at around 5.16 p.m., it was revealed that Colleen was recently exposed for sending unsolicited nudes of Trisha Paytas to underaged minors, and she's also been accused of body shaming Paytas for years behind her back. Colleen would post inappropriate pictures of Trisha in response to what some of the minors were saying. In this one, congratulations to you and Eric, your parents, to which she says, oh my god, you look amazing, just saw the new photo inappropriate image of Trisha Paytas. User Johnny says proof of Colleen and her friends having viewing parties of Trisha's 
inappropriate imagery, she's a subscriber now. You can see what's being said. Here we have video evidence of the watch parties. Again, using Trisha's photos as an insult. Interestingly enough, just a few months ago, Colleen was doing a podcast with Trisha Paytas. Couldn't even look her in the eye. You no one should ever talk about anyone's body ever, I don't think. I think it's completely inappropriate and wrong, and every body size and shape is beautiful. Mm -hmm. One user points out that Section 1470 of Title 18 United States Code prohibits any individual from knowingly transferring or attempting to transfer obscene matter using the U.S. mail or any means or facility of interstate or foreign commerce to a minor under 16 years of age. Convicted offenders face fines and imprisonment for up to 10 years. So when she's posting stuff like this, obviously this is a very severe crime. And just about one hour ago, Trisha Paytas posted a response saying this. So I need to nip this in the bud that I do not condone at all um, unsolicited sending unsolicited anyone of anybody or her or not. I think using someone's needs as a way to hurt them, make fun of them, make light of them, um, be mean is is the lowest form of human, the lowest form of intelligence. I think that's so inhumane. I think that's so disgusting for anyone hearing all that horrible stuff underneath the photo, like about my body just being messed up or disgusting. And it's 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 a lot. Yes, I'm. A Worker and yes, I chose this job and yes, I make money doing it. Um, but it never feels good to have someone just like make fun of your body. It's just a really vulnerable thing. And um, it's, it is, it is a little embarrassing if I'm being honest, but I'm more embarrassed for her that this is the kind of person she is. Like I'm, I'm so embarrassed. And these weren't a long time ago. This is someone well into their thirties just gave birth sending and I, a month prior, I was in her house meeting her child and doing a mukbang, meeting her newborn and doing a mukbang with her. In these texts, there's also friends of hers. They showed the viewing parties that were talked about to make fun of me. They did viewing parties of my content to make fun of me. And there's a friend of hers who I actually met as well back in 2018 with his face posing next to explicit images of me and um there was a video of it and it's a lot it's a lot you're probably also not surprised to learn that colleen lied to trisha when she was confronted with this much like she lied about everything else and is continuing to lie and it wasn't just one occasion there was multiple times that she sent just different photos and different positions of me um I did ask her about these a couple weeks ago before there was um, the proof, so to speak, right? <clears throat> and she assured me that she had never sent photos of me, that um, this one fan who was underage at the time would send photos to her. She's like, no, he was a fan. He sent photos to me and he was obsessed with you. And he would just send me it. And once in a while, I'd like respond to him and be like, hey, okay. That's what she told me a couple weeks ago. If you've been keeping up with the story, that's also not the first time Colleen has tried to shift blame from herself and blame one of her fans. Colleen Ballinger is yet again using Adam McIntyre as a scapegoat to try get out of her own bullshit. Trisha is about to tell you that Colleen told her a couple weeks ago, fresh news, that actually it was all Adam and Adam was sending them. And I would respond. However, in the process of Colleen trying to throw me under the bus and trying to expose me and turn around her stuff on me, she's admitted that she was in, you know, the, what's the word I'm thinking? Sorry, I've been awake for so long. In conversations and distribution of Trisha Paytas's with a minor. So in the process of Colleen Ballinger 
trying to throw me under the bus to make Trisha happy and be like, but it was him, not me. She acknowledges that she was engaging in conversations with the distribution of with a 14 year old when she was in her 30s, which, ladies and gentlemen, is illegal. Colleen Ballinger has committed a federal crime. This isn't a person who I would want my children to watch at all. That being said, and as interesting as this is always something that's more interesting to me, that's right. You guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes as always, brothers and sisters. I will see you in the next video. Thank you to my patrons for your continued and ongoing support. If you too want to be a patron and support what we do here on the channel, call out terrible people. Uh, the link will be in the pinned comment. Also, thank you if you've donated to the charity. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Let me know in the comment section if you have. We've surpassed the goal to help children in difficult situations. That is amazing. You are amazing. And thank you for watching this video. If you're a new subscriber, also let me know in the comment section below. I will heart your comment. And that's just another way to show that you're repping. If you're not repping, you're Greg. And how you do that, all you gotta do is subscribe, but notifications turned on. Be in the comment section to every single video because I'm gonna be there. Greg the Cat's gonna be there in spirit and the rest of the Rep Squad community as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you. These YouTubers, man, they're crazy.